What's going on everybody? Walter with the RC Addiction Vlog. Uh, guys, we are back on the workbench and we are working on another low C NASCAR. Um, we are doing, let's see if I can get this off. Of course, I'm trying to fight this top motor plate that's a little difficult to get off on these NASCARs. Sometimes you gotta pry them up a little bit and get them going. Um, but what we are trying to do today we had one of uh, the subscribers uh, comment on the last low C video about the water break in. And so we are going to do today, we are going to do a water break in video and show you guys how to do that. So, um, what we got to do first when you're looking at your low C NASCARs, we got to get this top uh, tower, or I'm not sure what they call that, center brace, if you will off and to get the motor out and this is a brand new car um i usually try to do this to all of my brushed uh cars before they hit the track um and the reason you do this is because the continuity uh that the brushes make uh is like tenfold or i don't even know I, you guys there's probably somebody out there that can uh verify the science but it is a night and day difference on what, how the mo how much faster the motors are. I mean, I there's a horsepower number out there somewhere for somebody, but I don't know what it is for you know a brushed motor on this low C. But oh come on, y'all! Oh that's why I still I forgot that screw in the middle. See, even. Now we can get this off. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So, centerpiece out. Now, and that was a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. So make sure you count nine before you take them out. Don't make the mistake I did and forget about the center one. Um, so here's what you're looking at, right? Now, mine, as soon as I yanked on that top plate, the motor fell right out. The motor plate probably wasn't all the way in there from the factory, which I have noticed. So make sure, guys, on these low C's, because we're running them box stock, that doesn't mean you can't take the car apart to inspect it. There's no rule that says that you can't take the car apart just to inspect it, um, to make sure that it was put together properly um that the bearings are greased like i said if you guys watched my other video about going fast with these things um and what it takes to make one go fast there's the goods you can make these low seas very fast very very fast um compared to a you know out of the box one um so here's what it would look like with the motor still in it before i pull it out and then you would just pull the motor you pull on the motor and wiggle it out of that little groove that it's in and you see the motor plate that's on there so now what we're going to want to go ahead and do is remove our gear. And we're going to reach over here for the MIP. And we'll go ahead and get that off. The other nice part about going through your low C is that, um, you know, you can kind of inspect the craftsmanship. Uh, some of these cars, I've had a couple of them that, um, this is going to be one of them I don't watch. Dang it. Maybe. <clears throat> Is that not gonna? Huh. Okay. Well, we might have gotten screwed with this one out of the box. And let me. We're gonna take the motor plate off. Because. We actually have one of the hot racing uh, adjustable motor plates, I believe. I think it's hot racing that makes it, or it might have been in just like a stock armor piece, I don't remember. We're gonna find out though. Let's see, this thing's gonna be, dang it. Okay, so one of the problems we're running into is the, oh, there it goes, it came right off, sweet. Whew, that was close. I don't know what they put on these pinions. There's like a glue or something. Hmm. 
That's interesting. That one was a lot easier than the last one I did. Okay, so motor's out, pinion's off, motor plate's off. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do that motor break-in. And what I do for this, um, this isn't probably the smartest idea, but I use a AA battery. Um, I usually just find one out of some a remote uh, that needs the batteries replaced in it and uh, just pop one out of there. And I'll show you what we do with it. So let me go grab a glass of water. Um, normally I, I use like a clear solo cup. Um, my wife uh, usually has these clear solo cups in the kitchen for the parties and stuff. Um, I'll usually grab one of those and I do the see-through because it's easier to see the color of the water. Um, because that's kind of how I determine when it's been broken enough is based on how much the color changes of the water. Um, and I'll show you that here in a second. So let me go grab a cup of water uh, and I'll be right back. We've got our cup of water and we're gonna go over here. We're gonna find an old remote with some batteries in it. Oh, that one's empty. You guys know how the RC world goes. You're always taking batteries out of remotes, doing something, right? It's always something. So, said Duracell AA battery, okay? Now, it doesn't need to be fully charged, doesn't need to be nothing. Obviously, you can tell by the color of the wires on the motor which one's positive and which one's negative. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the positive and the negative to said sides of the battery. And we're gonna do that when the motor is in the water. And what we're gonna do is just hold the motor running. And I use a double A because the double A doesn't put the full power to the motor. It just give, it puts it at like a 25% throttle, basically is kind of what it replicates. Um, Cause I don't want it to be broken at full throttle. I want it to break in nice and slow. Um, and so what we do is, that's why we use the double A's. If you watch this on YouTube from other people, um, you'll see they've got uh, where it's rigged up to a remote where they can actually control the throttle like they would in the car. Um, I don't have anything that fancy. We're not doing it that nice. Um, all I do is hold the positive and the negative to their sides of the battery and let the motor do its thing in the water. Uh, here's those clear solo cups. Now I do only fill it up about halfway because when the motor's spinning, it'll create a little bit of a wave inside and I don't want the water spilling all over the place. So we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a whirl. So uh, positive side is usually the side with the button on it, right? For most batteries at least. So we just go ahead and hold that on there and you can hear it spinning, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and dunk it in the water. Oops. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so if I hold this up here, you can see the motor is running inside the water and it is breaking in those brushes, okay? Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll hold this until, you know, the motor's been on the battery for, I don't know, probably two minutes at the most. And then I'll pull it out, let it sit, let it, you know, dry off for a little bit and then I'll do another two minutes and what when I talk about the water discoloration you can see in the video how the water's already starting to turn a little bit of a, a light gray and what that is is the brush is cleaning the contact and it's cleaning uh, that surface and the dirt in the water is what you're seeing um, and that's why we do this is so that the brushes when they hit those contact points that they're as clean as can be and make as much power as possible um, out of these small little motors. And so we'll just sit here and hold this thing until we feel like maybe for the first round that the color's changed enough and we just sit there and let her go. Now, one of the things people ask me is like, do you see a difference? And the answer is yes, there's a dramatic difference. Um, and I, I could put the link to Live RC to the on-road track that we've been racing these at lately. And I mean, it's it, I, my buddy Ryan, who will be on the podcast, um, is so much faster than anybody else on the track just because of 
some of the speed secrets that, you know, these Losis uh, have out there in the market that you can get away with. Um, and uh, every track's a little different, you guys. Don't, don't think that my track is running the same rules as your track. I mean, yes, we run the box stock class, but because there's been these uh, shortages in parts and shortages in tires and shortages in all of the, you know, said things for these low C NASCARs, it, we've had to adjust if we want to keep racing. Right. And most tracks will have to do the same thing. Um, we maybe just didn't do it as, uh, did it a little faster than, uh, other RC shops around the country. Um, but we, we were doing it because we, we saw it coming. Um, I'm in a supplier's industry, uh, for my day to day job. And I saw that coming a long ways away from the minute that they said that the cars were on back order after the first release, I was like, well, better get motors and, uh, you know, some of those crucial parts, uh, on order now, or you won't see them for the first year. And sure enough, here we are, there's dealers that can't get the soft, uh, compound tires. They can't get motors. They can't get replacement ESCs. I actually had one car that had a bad ESC right out of the box where it would just hold full throttle as soon as you turned it on. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people that have had issues with these cars. And, um, so, you know, and it sucks because those people, they, they spend the, you know, I think the cars retailed for like 180 in 2024. Um, you know, and it's like, these guys paid a premium price for the car and now they just, they don't, they can't use it because there's not parts available. So, um, okay. So I think we're about done with our first deal. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of the water. And again, it doesn't hurt anything, doesn't do the motor, like it doesn't hurt these motors. These brushless motors are waterproof. So you can, you can send this into the water and you can see the little bit of discoloration. It's like a gray or white haze in the water. And it's just all the dirt and muck from those contacts, uh, you know, getting cleaned off. So usually what I'll do is I'll take my air compressor and just clean the first bit of water out of it. Usually we'll take the thing and I'll spin it a couple times, take some more water out of it. Okay, so that is the first round of water breaking in a, a brushed motor. Um, I hope that uh, the gentleman that commented on this, uh, on the last no uh, low C NASCAR video uh, enjoys this. Uh, and then the rest of you that watch this enjoy this, but that is uh, how we break the motor in. And I will usually do that same process three or four times, depending on what I'm doing for these low C's and the size of the motor. I really only feel like two or three runs uh, is what they need. Um, some of the like 12 turned uh, brush motors from Traxxas that we run in like our oval, like a slash modified uh, oval car. We will do those for a lot longer. We'll do those. I'll tape up like a nine bolt to it and uh, send that thing in a can for, I don't know, a couple hours, you know, but that's because they're just bigger. They take a little bit longer and those we're trying to get a lot more power out of. So um, we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, you know, if there's anything else in these NASCARs that you guys wanted to see that we're doing, um, I've done uh, a video on the shock oil on rebuilding the OEM shocks. Um, I just finished that on this blue one. So that's been good. Uh, we just water broke in the motor. We're going to clean up with a little bit of the electronics and uh, get the OEM fan out of here and uh, get our... Uh, transponder put back in this and uh, go ahead and send it on down the road. I did uh, begin to use the new body. Uh, I am going to go ahead and use this one. My custom painted purple one uh, was just had taken a beating from racing. So um, we're going to go ahead and use the new blue one. This is the uh, Kyle Busch car. It basically just de-stickered it. And then I usually do some sort of sticker or sponsorship like wrap myself. 
um, with some of the comp like my own company logos and stuff like that just to represent those so um, but like I said we'll keep doing more videos on these NASCARs on all the little bits and pieces that we like doing to them so I appreciate you guys watching we'll see you next time